Good morning, everybody. Hope you got a great night's rest in. Hope you had an opportunity to let some of that information we covered yesterday just soak in. Today, though, we're going to look at the seven roles of a leader. Now, over the next few minutes, we're going to create a sense of clarity when it comes to your role as a leader. We will follow the same path as we have before to help create a sense of mastery. A brief explanation of the concepts and then an example and then we'll put it to work with a few exercises and role playing. Yes, you will have to talk to each other. So sorry. Your number one job, your number one role is to be a developer of people. It is your role to get your people better in all aspects of the job. Develop your team to be great corporate citizens. Develop them to be better at their jobs, better at the next position they may want better at making a difference. To make this happen, you first must get in touch with them. Yes, I am saying one-on-one -on -one meetings. We need to stop right now and you need to create your schedule for your one-on-one -on -one meetings. These one-on-one -on -one meetings cover a wide range of territory when it comes to being an effective leader and are critical to your success. Let's look at the article from the Harvard Business Review. In part, it says, too many business leaders today are out of touch with the employees they lead. One in three employees doesn't even trust their employer. Despite the fact that billions are spent every year on leadership development. Where do you fall? Do you fall in that area or doesn't trust? You see, having regularly scheduled one-on-one -on -one meetings is the key to having and building trust. Allow me to share with you, in part, a case study about the effectiveness of one-on-one -on -one meetings. See, Dr. Julie felt that having regular meetings with her team would not be very beneficial. Her feelings are based upon her one-on-one -on -one meetings of the past. As a rule, the only time that she had a one-on-one -on -one meeting was when she was in trouble. When meetings are only held when the employee is in trouble, it creates an atmosphere of distrust. When you start to have these meetings based upon developing your direct reports, the atmosphere will change to trust. Change how you're thinking about these meetings and know there are an opportunity to develop your people. Build trust with your people, lower HR complaints, be more productive, lower your turnover, and it goes on and on and on. Let me ask you though, have you spent money on leadership training before in the past and it gave you a short-term impact but nothing that lasted? Well, here's why. Leaders will take this type of workshop and they do not take it back to their team. They don't take it back to help them develop. Your number one job is to, to develop your people. This is your number one job. What can you take back today? As this workshop continues, look for one thing each day that you can take back to your leadership team, that you can take back to your team and develop them. Being a developer of people is the number one job, your number one role as a leader. Here are two suggested techniques to help you deliver on your number one job. Look for ways to motivate. Number two, understand what is most important. How do you do this? Have a meeting with your direct reports on a regular basis. Maybe the first meeting is a get to know you meeting. See, so we're going to focus on habit number five from the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. Ask the following questions. What is most important to you about this job? What is your expectation of me as a leader? What are your goals for this quarter? How can I best support you? See, the key here is to ask. Habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Understand your direct reports. By understanding them and their needs, you will find the key to developing each member of your team. 
the next role that you as a leader must live is a role of being a great communicator. To be a great communicator could possibly mean that you have the ability to allow others to express themselves both openly and honestly, while having them understand your expectations and needs as a leader. We'll take just a couple minutes to discuss two techniques that you can use to be a great communicator, two out of six. Put others at ease. What does your body language say? Are you making eye contact, a comfortable amount of eye contact? Is your mind in the space of understanding and not the space of preparing your reply? Work to listen for understanding. This is one powerful shortcut to putting people at ease. Another way to put people at ease is to stop talking. Yes. Stop talking. We as managers talk too much, especially when it comes time to having those tough discussions. Have you ever noticed that we talk more and more when we don't have the necessary confidence for a hard conversation? Stop talking. Plan what you're going to say. You should spend far more time planning what you're going to say than actually saying it. Stop talking. As a leader, one of your roles is to be a coach, a head coach. See, you need to bring this all together, the complete package. Offense, defense, special teams. Maybe that equals for you inventory control, development of your people, delivery of the product or service. We are saying your goals, your actions, your results. It is your role to bring them all together, to tie them all together. You're going to tie it all together and deliver it on time with excellence and you're going to be profitable or productive. What is in the way? What barriers are in the way? What limits are in the way? What's in the way of your team being excellent? Not just doing a good job, but doing a great job. This should be your homework for the next five days. Look around. What is preventing your team from being excellent? And then move it out of the way. Be a leader that looks for and find ways to limit the limits. Be better. What are your short and long-term goals? What is in the way of your team achieving them? Move them out of the way. Your role is to break the limits. Break the walls down. Think about communication between your team and other teams. Think about slogans being used. Fake it till you make it, for example. Think about how the equipment is set up. How the office space is set up. What's your open door policy, your closed door policy? Let your team learn about the industry. Do not let the lack of industry knowledge be a barrier or a limit to your success. Cut the tape. Be a bureaucracy smasher. Cut the red tape. Find your company's policies and procedures and read them and learn them. Then decide what policies or procedure is in the way. Take a few days to document the effect. See, you need numbers. You need to quantify the effect that this policy or procedure is having. So let's say, for example, Everyone must turn in a report of customer contact as it happens. The challenge is taking the time to complete this report in between calls. After each call during peak time to fill out the report and submitting it, it is lowering the productivity of the team. Your customers are having to wait on hold far too long and you know that's irritating. By the way, never complain without a solution. We'll talk a lot more about this when we start talking about a great attitude. So, if the peak hours for customer contacts are from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., and if we start allowing our team to work with the customers during this time, we can be far more productive and handle more customers with less complaints from customers with less hold time. 
When you consider it takes three to four minutes to fill out the paperwork and return to the phones, we have customers on hold far too long, and this creates a disservice. But from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m., that is a great time to catch up on all the paperwork as the staff is having to answer far fewer calls. Or, is there a way to do this so that there is no multitasking taking place at all? Brainstorm this with your team and create an answer for it. In fact, brainstorm it right now with your team in this room. By doing this now, you will have some great practice before you tackle your own challenges. Faster, faster, faster. What can you do to help your team do the job faster? Is it moving equipment around? Is it removing the need to create duplicate Excel spreadsheets? Do you need to teach your team time management skills? Be an expediter. Help your team to do it faster. Open your eyes and look. Be a facilitator. Look for ways to have your team do a better job in creating the product or the service. The technique you want to use here is to ask. Ask your team how they can do a better job, what they need to do a better job. Remember, they are doing the job daily and will have a different perspective than you as a manager. You may have the bigger picture in mind, but they are doing the job on a daily basis and the view that they have, you can use, ask. In fact, you can also ask about limiting limits, cutting the red tape, and being faster, ask. Learning and applying these seven roles requires an open-minded approach because being a leader is an art and science. We need to work on the fundamentals as well as the entire playbook, including the trick plays. So let's get into our groups and get to work.